Welcome to explainer.com and my sessions on leaving cert mat solutions. Uh, for this session we're going to look at the ordinary level paper 1. Question 7 part C. Okay, that's a, quite unusual just to focus on a part of one question, but this question is very similar in the way it's given each year. It's the real life situation differentiation question. Okay? So it's part of questions 6, 7, and 8, which are differentiation questions. And as part of the real-life situation, you're nearly always given a quadratic equation. That's a, an equation where the term is, uh, there's a square term. And the equation usually gives a position s, or a height h, in terms of a time t. Okay, so something is changing its position or height, and you're given the equation, usually a quadratic, to describe it. Okay, now, it's a differentiation question. So, for each of the parts of this question, it could have anything from, well, three or four subparts. Does the subpart ask you for position? Well, then, you're going to use the undifferentiated equa uh, equation. Okay, so when the equation is undifferentiated, usually it relates to position. Now, does the question ask for speed, or do you have to find out something about speed. Well, you'll have to differentiate once, because when you differentiate a, a position equation, you get speed. Now, does the equation ask for acceleration? Well, that'll be uh, a second differentiation. Okay, so you differentiate the speed equation, which has already been uh, differentiated once. So the square term in the quadratic equation, when it's differentiated, it usually goes to t, and when it's differentiated again to get acceleration, it usually goes to a constant. So the result, the resulting conclusion is that all of these, all, every year, this quadratic equation, it'll always give a constant acceleration, okay? Because it's always a quadratic equation. Okay, so let's look at the, equa the, the question itself from 2008. There you go, it's a flare. And where's the equation? Now, in normal life, you wouldn't actually get the equation. The equation, what it does, is it, uh, is it describes the whole um, situation, okay? But not in terms of whether it's a flare or a missile or a rocket or whatever. It just gives you symbols for that, okay? So in this case, we're given a flare, and we're told that its height, h, which is, which is the position, is 20 plus 90 times t minus 5 times t squared. So there's a square term, so it's clearly uh, an, uh, a quadratic again. And so the, it's what, it, what it is, though, is a, a flare that's fired up. I mean, it's not too important what the object actually is, but let's just, uh, let's just continue. And the height h measured relative to the tower is the, 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 the main unknown there, okay? So we're going to go through what the, the different parts of that question. We're asked to find the height above the ground at which the flare explodes. Well, the flare is designed to explode, if you read the question, at t equals t seconds. Sorry, t equals 7 seconds. So, for that first part, we only have to find the height. That's position. Okay, height is a position. Right, so we don't have to differentiate anything here at which the flare explodes. So, the first part, no differentiation. How easy is that? A differentiation question with no differentiation in the first part. Well, what we do is we plug in t equals 7 in here. Okay, so what we find is 20 plus 90 times 7 minus 5 times 7 squared. So that's 49 there. That's 630. And that's 20, and that's 245 there. So we add that, or we sorry, we take away that from, from 630, and we get, well, we get 405 at the end. Okay, so that is actually the height at which the flare explodes. We haven't had to differentiate anything yet. So let's move on to the second part. Well, you can imagine that the second part we will have to differentiate, but it's just not painful. Well, let's just let's just see how painful differentiation is. Find the speed of the flare. Okay, once again, there's our flare. Uh, find the speed of the flare at which it explodes. Well, the speed when you have a position, you differentiate once to get the speed. So let's just differentiate that. Okay, speed will equal differentiate 20. What's that? Well, there's no t in that, so it goes to 0. Differentiate 90 times t. There's 1t. 
So that goes to 90. Differentiate 5 t squared. We multiply the square by 5 and then reduce the, the power by 1. So we get minus 10 t. So that is actually the speed equation of this. Right now we're asked to find the speed as it ex uh, uh, when it explodes. Well, t equals 7 when it explodes. Right, so we put in t, uh, t equal to 7 there, and we get the speed equals 70 minus 90. That's 20, and that's meters per second. Okay, meters per second, that's speed. So t, uh, speed equals 20 meters per second. That's when the speed when it explodes. Right, so we go to part 3. And part 3, our flare again. And we're asked, if the flare failed to explode... Right, well, it's a dud. That means someone got ripped off, whoever bought it. If the flare failed to explode, find that greatest height above the ground it would reach before falling back down. Okay, now, the greatest height above the ground. Let's just make a picture of what the flare probably does. Okay, so there's your tower. There's where it gets sent up. Okay, it goes up and up and up. And then it starts to stop. Yeah, and then it changes direction and comes down, doesn't it? I think most people can imagine that's what a flare will do. Well, what's this point? Well, at this point, the speed equals zero, in fact. Okay? The speed equals zero at this point. So we have our, our equation, which is 90 minus t. That was the speed equation for this flare. And we know that, at this point, this will equal zero. Okay? The speed equals zero when it reaches this point. So that will, that will actually give us the time immediately. So we set this equal to 0, and we'll find that t equals 9. So when, when does the flare reach its high, highest point? When t equals 9 seconds. Okay, now, at, at t equal to 7, which may have occurred around here, let's say it didn't explode, right? So it kept on going up. But this was at t equal to 7. And it'll be a t equal to 9 here, that it reaches its highest point and then starts to come down. Now, the magic of differentiation means that we can get the speed equation by differentiating this once, setting it to 0, and saying that that's when the speed is equal to 0. So we got our equation there, put it to 0, and we found that that meant that t equals 9. And that actually means that the answer is 9 seconds. That's when it reaches its highest point. Okay, so hopefully I've tried to clarify that. I'm going to go, you're not going to get this question again in 2009. This is 2008 and it's likely to be a totally different object. But what, what happens is, is that you probably will get that quadratic again. So let's look at the previous year's questions, okay, and see if they're so wildly different, okay, because they're probably not dealing with flares at all. What, what things in common do they have with 2008? Well, what was 2007? Well, 2007 was a car starting off. Okay, it started from point A and went to point B. Okay, so that's altogether a lot less exciting than a distress flare. But we're given the equation again. Once again, it's a quadratic. So it should be easy to, to get the speed equation from that. What's the speed equation? I'm not actually going to go through these questions now. I'm just going to describe them generally to show you how similar they are in nature, despite the fact that they deal with airplanes, cars, and rockets, or whatever. Okay, you're always going to get that quadratic equation. So that is the position, the position of the car relative to A. Okay, if the car ends up being here, well, S will give you this, okay, the position relative to uh, A. Now, this car is starting from rest, okay, it starts from rest and it accelerates, and well, what, let's just look at the speed, let's just get the speed equation. You differentiate this with respect to t, so you get speed will equal 4t plus 2. That's our speed. And the acceleration, well, that'll be differentiate this again, and you actually get 4. So the acceleration is 4, and the units for, for acceleration are meters per second squared. Okay, that's acceleration, meters per second squared, that's handy to know.